Hey guys, Ariel over here at Finest. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about heating options. If you're new to the channel, I live in a tiny house in the western mountains, a pretty cold area. I live off-grid as in no physical connection to public utilities, and I heat mostly with a wood stove. Now if you've been watching all my videos, you probably know that. You've seen uh, various videos about me collecting firewood and the operation and such on this stove. I've got several other um, ones on that if you're interested in details on this stove, though to the best of my knowledge, this particular one is no longer being manufactured. Um, if you saw my recent one on things I would do differently, this is the one thing on that list that I cared enough about to actually change. Um, I did put in a wood stove. I did not have one for the first little over a year that I lived here, and I'm really glad I do. So what is my primary heat source? It is plenty warm in here. I get tons of questions about how do I stay warm enough. You can see how I'm dressed. It is uh, the middle of February right now, and the high today I think was about 15 degrees Fahrenheit. It was about negative 5 last night. We have a lot of temperatures like that normally in the winter, and I am actually uncomfortably hot sitting this close to it right now to uh, film the video. And I've got a window open there, and one in both of the lofts um, for air circulation and fresh air and all of that. And it's still plenty hot in here. Um, the thermometer is reading actually 80 degrees right now, so I should open a window a little bit more. Now, for me, wood heat has been absolutely awesome as a primary heat source. It may or may not be for you, depending on your situation. For me, the reasons it's great is because I have lots of firewood. I've got several videos on collecting that um, because I live in an area with a ton of trees, a lot of which were um, killed by beetles. So there's a lot of standing dead firewood that I have fairly easy access to with just my effort, you know, put in to collect it. And I'm fairly um, stationary. So if you're a tiny house that's on the road all the time, there's probably no good way for you to, you know, collect and carry a cord or two of wood with you. So that may um, change whether or not this works well for you. But if you're in a tiny house on wheels or a small house, or whatever, and you primarily stay in one location, um, I think it can be a really good option. It, uh keeps the house plenty hot. Wood heat is a radiant heat. It feels nice. It's warm. The floor is warm to the touch. You know, these, these are not actually wood. They're tiles. Um, these tiles are warm to the touch. You know, everything's just radiating heat. So if I open a door, open a window, and let out all the warm air that's in here and bring in cold air, and then I close it up again, um, everything warms back up very rapidly because the actual objects are warm. When you're heating with a, more of a forced air, that tends to be less true because you're mainly heating the air and not so much the objects. And so if you open the door and let all your heat out, it's going to be cold for a while until it warms back up. Um, this also solved uh, if, um, my condensation problem. If you were following me from the very beginning, you know I was having moisture problems right at the start. Um, due to propane heat, um, some moisture from the propane heat. I'll show you my propane heaters in a minute. And some just from breathing, cooking, um, you know, all the normal stuff that goes on in a house. And wood is such a dry heat, not only does it not add moisture to the air, it takes moisture out of the air. So now I keep water going on top of the stove so that there's a little bit of moisture in the air. But it's nice for me to have to combat um, the too dry air in the house versus way too much moisture and the problems that causes. So this works really well for my primary heat source. Now it's small, so it does burn out. If I've got it going like this and I stack it full and go to bed or leave and go somewhere or whatever, um, it'll burn actively like this for mm, three, four hours. And I have found live still glowing coals in there eight or nine hours later, but at that point, you know, it's not cold, but it's it's certainly not actively burning anymore. So it doesn't burn all night long, but that's worked fine for me because my house is well insulated. If it's warm, when I go to bed, I stack it full, I pass out. Um, sure, the temperature will be a little lower downstairs here in the morning. I sleep plenty well. If you saw my sleeping loft video, I got lots of blankets on my bed. I stay plenty warm. And so I'll wake up and instead of being nearly 80 degrees, which is too warm, um, gonna have to open a window more to be able to sit here and talk to you guys. Um, It'll be, depending on the overnight temperatures outside, anywhere from, 
you know, 65 to 50 something degrees in here, but it will warm up fairly quickly again in the morning if I fire the stove back up. So that's not been a big issue for me. But the one thing that is true is if you go away for any extended period of time, longer than like sleeping overnight, you want to go, you know, somewhere overnight, go on a trip, be gone for several days. If you live somewhere as cold as I do, um, this would be an issue because if there's no one here to feed the wood stove and that was my only heat source, the house would freeze, which would be a problem for any water stored in here, for my house plants, um, for canned goods and such, all that stuff. Now, if you live somewhere where it's not routinely below freezing for so much of the year, you may very well get away with wood as your only heat source and just, um, you just can't go away for any length of time during the few times of year when, when it is that cold. For me, that would be most of the year, and so I want to have a backup. And because I didn't have the wood stove in here to start with, what was originally my main source of heat is now my backup. So I'm going to show you guys that. But overall, love this. Love my little stove. This stove is not being manufactured anymore, um, but uh, there is a tiny wood stove called the Hobbit and one called the Squirrel that are both fairly similar. I can't give you personal experience with either one because I have not used them, but they're similar in size and uh, the reviews I've heard from other people are good. So if you're looking for a tiny wood stove, I'd look up one of those too. And if you're interested in more on this, check out, I'll link below the, the videos I've got on that. So that is pumping out a significant amount of heat. Let me show you my other heat sources. Okay, so just changed angles here. The wood stove's right over there. Window's wide open. It's about 10 degrees outside right now. Um, just letting in some fresh air and, and keeping it cool because a wood stove doesn't have a thermostat on it, so it is either going to be warm or not. So that stove keeps it plenty warm. Because I have access to so much wood um, easily and freely from trees that were already killed by beetles, I don't have any concern about burning that plenty hot, and if I need cooler air or fresh air, I just open another window and that's not a problem. But I am sitting on top of the original heater that was um, built in here. Actually, it's my pantry right over here. Grizzly's also sleeping in the kitchen, ignoring me. Um, but right under the very bottom of the pantry here, it's built in suburban propane heater. This is direct vent, so it's got vents that go outside. And then on the inside, the heat comes out right here. I've got a little radiator vent. There's one in the bathroom right behind the toilet and one right under the stairs here. So while the rest of these um, are drawers, this very bottom one is not. It just looks like it. That works pretty well. It, um, it does use propane. It also uses electricity, which kind of like the whole kitchen range thing was something I was not aware of until I moved in here. I thought if I had a propane heater, I needed propane. I did not realize it might also require electricity. But because of the way it's set up to, to blow, um, you know, exhaust outside and heat inside, it needs electricity to ignite and to run the fan and will not operate without uh, power to it. So it, it does work well. It, it burns less propane than some, but requires more electricity. My, my power here is somewhat limited because I've chosen to have a, a small solar setup. And that uh, means that there's only so many things I can choose to run that have power. Now, the very nice thing about this is that it's got a thermostat there. Works like any other heater on a thermostat. You set it at 55 or 65 or 185, it doesn't go that hot, or whatever you want, and it will shut on, you know, turn on and off to maintain that temperature. As I said <clears throat> before when I was talking about the wood stove, one of the disadvantages that I didn't like so much about this is it just warmed up the air. So if I opened the window or opened the door, had to carry something in and out, you would rapidly lose all of your warm air and because the floor was not really warm because it's not a radiant heat you know sure warmer than the outside temperature but but not really warm um, i was rarely comfortable in you know a t-shirt and skirt and bare feet in the middle of winter um but it certainly heated the house and being controlled by a thermostat is super handy Pretty rapidly, um, there was actually a thermostat problem with it one weekend shortly after I moved in, so this was more than three years ago, um, which has now been fixed and it's been working fine ever since. I decided I needed a backup because at that point I didn't have a wood stove and this was my only heat source and when it had a thermostat problem, it was over the weekend, it was way below freezing, and I had no other way to warm up my house. So I wanted to do something to have a backup for that. So now 
um, I've got three heat sources because the first thing I did as a backup was put in this little Wave 6 catalytic um, heater. This also runs off of propane, does not require any electricity, um, which is a serious pro for my situation. The con is that because it's not vented to the outdoors in any way, it does put a lot more moisture into the inside air, which creates condensation problems in tall, um, tiny spaces and well-insulated spaces that are, are very well sealed. But it made a really good backup. This isn't very expensive. I think I got it on eBay for uh, a couple hundred dollars. If I need a backup heater, like if this one under here breaks, um, I can fire this up. I do always make sure that I've got a window open um, when that's running to be sure it's getting plenty of fresh air. I've never used this as my primary heat source. It's always been a backup. That's what I got it for. And it does work well for that. It has a radiant heat that's again much more like the wood stove so the actual objects get warm, you know. So that part is nice. The moisture production is, is less nice. But if you need an inexpensive um, backup option, I do like this. Now, had I had my wood stove from the start, I probably would not have gotten this because now I have three heating options. That's probably a little bit of overkill, but two options is really good. So now this just remains here as a backup. Maybe at some point I'll take it out and use it somewhere else um, because I, I don't really use it here anymore. But I, I do still have it. So now the, the main way I heat is with the wood stove, but as I mentioned, if I'm going to be gone for any length of time, which doesn't happen a lot, but sometimes I want to go somewhere, and it's cold, I want to know my whole house isn't going to freeze solid. So I do leave the thermostat for this built-in one set at like 53 degrees, because that's as low as it will go, so I know if I'm gone and the wood stove burns out, nobody's here to fill it, that when the temperature gets down to 53 degrees, that's going to kick on and it's going to maintain the house at that temperature for however long I'm gone, as long as I've made sure that I've got power in my battery, you know, solar system, and propane in the tank. Um, you would want to check those if you were going to leave for any length of time, because if it runs out of propane while you're gone, it's obviously not going to heat. So that works really well for me to have that combination of a thermostatically controlled backup for any times I do have to leave, and to use the wood heat as my main heat source because it's dry, it's a uh, very nice, um, warm, radiant heat, and my fuel for it is virtually free, other than my labor that goes into collecting the firewood. Like I said, however, if that was my only heat source, living somewhere very cold, I would have a problem if I ever wanted to be gone for more than eight hours at a time um, when it was wintry or cold. And here that's about eight months of the year, so that would be a fairly big deal. So I don't at all regret having both, like I said, if you live somewhere warmer, you may well be able to get away with just having a wood stove because you could just plan on being home for the few times it would be too cold to, to leave it alone. But if you live somewhere cold, um, you probably do want to think about having backups. I am so thankful I have a wood stove, would not want to be without it, but I also would not want it to be my only heat source because it would really tie me here or create big problems with freezing if I was gone at all. So those are some things to think about, things I've learned from experience. That's why I have three different ways to heat in my tiny house now and kind of how that works out for me. So maybe that gives you some ideas if you're thinking about being off-grid or in a small space or a tiny house with um, thinking through heating options. The, the main one I did not mention is electric. Electric can be a really good option if you've got lots of electricity. If you're grid tied or if you've got a big um, solar system or whatever, if you've got plenty of power, Electric can be a very good heat because it's uh, clean, you don't get the little bits of ash and sawdust and stuff that tend to come with wood um, heat. It doesn't um, uh, put moisture in the air by burning, which uh, propane heaters do, less so with this one, more so with this one, but it does require electricity. So if you're um, on a limited amount of electricity, that's not really an option, which is why I don't use it. But if if power use is no um, big deal, that could certainly be a very efficient way to heat a small space. It just doesn't work for me. The um, moisture issue is definitely something to be aware of when using propane heat. Even if you've got a vented one, which puts way less moisture in the air, it doesn't take any moisture out of the air for sure, like when you breathe or when you cook or shower or wash dishes or whatever all you're doing in your house, and the wood stove does. So that's been a huge help. I. I'm really glad I have that, but I'm also really glad I have this. 
So anyway, that's um, that's kind of the main heating options that I know of uh, for most tiny houses. You're probably going to be heating either with electricity or propane or wood. I am very happy with my combination of propane and wood. And for my kind of situation, that works really well. And hopefully that lets you think through kind of some of the pros and cons of the different options so you can figure out what works best for your situation, which is probably different than mine. Thanks for watching, folks. If you're interested in more info on my off-grid tiny house life, check out some of my other videos here. And if you like what you're seeing, click the little picture of my house to subscribe and then hit the little bell so YouTube actually notifies you every time there's a new video available. See y'all next time.